Sharks. Another game, another correctly predicted one from the analyst desk. Uh, first things first, I want to talk about the mid lane matchup. Probably the talent into Zed, you really didn't like that from no. Picks and Bands. I was really upset about that. I mean, the sad thing is, is I learned how bad that matchup was in solo queue. It's not even possible in competitive when the other player is you know, knowledgeable about this matchup. And the biggest power spike in that matchup for Zed comes when they hit six. Because it turns into an alt chicken, but with Zed with a huge advantage. If Zed ever ults first, he can probably still win that. If Talon ults first, he instantly dies to Zed. So there's almost... I don't see any way to win that matchup unless you get, I don't know, maybe jungle camped, some kind of big external factor to change the way that lane goes. Well, talking about jungle camping, we've seen another Chinese Rengar. Yep. Uh, I'm going to choose my words here. Despite Insect being Korean, he's playing on the Chinese server, uh, Chinese teams, the only other person that has pulled out Rengar was Wins to a very lackluster performance. No other team's doing it yet, but again, another very powerful, strong Rengar play. I mean, Freak, what do you think of that? Yeah, this is interesting to see the regional differences, basically. In North America, it was copying the, uh, I'm blanking the name, the Dandy build, right, which is Madrids into Cutlass into CDR into Tank. And um, I don't know if I love the high, high damage Reckless Rengar builds, which is finish your Feral Flare, grab a Cutlass, grab a Brutalizer, build Squishy until 35 minutes in where maybe you grab a Randuin's. I feel like that's too risky, but I they're guess we'll have to work. see. I, they're making it work, but it's an easy group is the problem. Yeah, I'm I'm skeptical that the insect build that we saw that was like flare into Yomu's Ghost Blade yeah. is actually going to work out in terms of higher level play if they were against a more challenging opponent that you weren't so convinced that you were just going to assassinate immediately. I just wonder if you're going to see more Rengar once uh, Lucian and Kha'Zix are going to be entered into the bans because usually both make it through. One team pick up one, the other team will pick up the other, but this time Lucian was banned. Kha'Zix is early picked and then what's left as an answer really? Yeah, there's Rengar and then maybe Elise, but Elise doesn't really spike at six anymore and these play like most junglers have been relatively passive so once they hit level six, you're just so far behind Behind, as is Nelise, so I don't even know what other junglers are going to be picked. Well, the thing is, I actually feel like we're seeing less engaged junglers than we're sort of supposed to strategically. Like, I do understand why Kha'Zix is good, I understand why Rengar is good and all this, but like, I feel like we're missing all the, the Vi's and the Jarvins that are still incredibly good, still good damage, decent duelist, but actually good at ganking junglers. And, and especially when we see so many mid lane focused matchups, you grab a champion like Kha'Zix, who doesn't have the best ganks, whereas when we saw like Gilius' Jarvan, he actually had some good things going for him, and I'm just sort of surprised to see less gank-focused junglers, basically. Yeah, I, and in terms of rounding out the pack, too, we've seen a little Nunu, but no Nocturne yet. And yep. a lot of the Korean teams do, in fact, like to play Nocturne. Oop, C or D might have... Uh, yeah, uh, Watch has been playing it in Nodge and White Shield. So this is another pick that we may see come up. And it could also be something as saving their picks, maybe. Playing the standard sure. ones in the group stages if you don't need to pull those out. But it, we'll yeah. see how that goes. Let's talk a little bit about the standings, because another day, another day of matches have been consigned to the history books. Let's pull up that graphic and see where the teams are placed. We are exactly halfway through both Group A and Group B. We're going to keep this graphic up for a little while as we look at Samsung White 3 and 0, Edward Gaming 2 and 1 in the Davids and Goliaths group. We really feel there's not much chance of HQ or Dark Passage really taking games off these top teams. There is really no surprise here. Exactly what people thought would happen ended up happening. And I actually want to bounce off what you said a second ago, quick shot about uh, these teams hiding their picks. Because actually back at All Star 2013, Rapid Star, I believe, was the All Star mid laner for Korea. And he started he played mid lane Kennen every single game just to make teams think he cared about Kennen so he could bring out his real champions when they played the Chinese All-Star team in the finals. It was ambition, but yeah. Ambition, ambition. sorry, yeah. thank you. The other. Now, let's talk Group B, because this is the inter interesting one for me. Starhorn Royal Club, 3-0. and Team Solomon, 2-1. and one. TPA, 1-2. One and two. SK Gaming, 0-3. and three. SK gets Sven Skeren back tomorrow. TPA and TSM going to be looking at who's going to get that next matchup uh, uh, between them. And there's a possibility that that second place could be up for grabs. Yeah, there is an outside shot that we have a three-way tie for second place if SK Gaming can win all three of their games and we can see TPA kind of take out TSM. Now, realistically, I think SK Gaming is probably going to lose to Royal Club, but they can still play the spoiler here. And that's what's so interesting is that this now full power SK Gaming could in fact knock somebody out of that second seed. Well, there's actually two ways it can go. They can still lose to Royal Club. They just need TPA to beat TSM. Just 
to kind of flip the group around, you've got a three-way tie. Or, yes, they beat Royal Club. Then they're actually in control of their own destiny. They can go three and three and just be a likely second place auto birth. It's going to be an interesting one to talk about. Probably, what's your take after seeing TPA, TSM, SK? Is there room for these upsets? I mean, we still feel Royal Club are the favorites, but yeah. they were pushed super hard today by an SK squad with a sub. Uh, it has been touched on a lot these last couple of days, but I think Switzerland coming back into the team is going to kind of light a fire. They're going to look at their losses and go, we could have won that game. And I think when he comes back in, they are going to kind of bring it back in the group stage. TPA, on the other hand, I don't see them really clawing back in this stage. And TSM, I think, is just going to keep getting stronger. I want to ask Crepo, after seeing TPA and some of the mistakes and problems they've had, full-strength SK with Sven, who scrimmed with them in Korea, will they be able to punish TPA's mistakes? I think definitely SK will rise above TPA. Um, I think once they got Lee Sin away from wins, it just, it just all started like crumbling down. Um, TPA just... Yeah, they have they have some good elements in there, but we saw you know their bot lane just didn't punish, uh, the the or didn't uh, use the windows of opportunity they had. Mm -hmm. Their mid game like calling wasn't good. They like some rotations were good, but then so every like something was lacking every time. And I think SK co will come back with a new passion. Like they want to perform. They want to show the world, hey, we made it to Worlds for a reason. If you go back to European playoffs, they actually were a good team strategically. Um, they have this very like unique style that Monty highlighted as well. And I think Svenskren is definitely um. Uh, gonna come to play if he's is uh, like mental capacity is stable because a lot of, a lot of things happen you know if he's coming yeah. in calm and and the crowd is not gonna be against him too much then maybe but it'll be a, a factor point. I I like the fact you do highlight Monty talking about SK because before the suspension you actually had SK to make it out of the groups after seeing the teams having some insight and knowing some of the mathematical possibilities if you were given the chance to change your prediction of the top two in this group, do you think SK would feature? Uh, n I mean, no, not now. They've lost too many games. I mean, I didn't. Ha I, if I were to say they were going to get second place in the group, I wouldn't have thought they would have beaten Starhorn Royal Club at all. Uh, so, assuming that they're going to lose again, the best they can do is two and four. Um, yeah, and then they rely on TPA to beat TSM, which again seems like it's not going to happen. You guys all predicted uh, TSM to win the matchup the first time. Looks like it's not going to change again. So yeah, mathematically, and again, assuming TSM beats TPA, then there's no chance for SK. Well, we'll see how that works out. And it's, uh, I don't actually know when their game is. It's coming up fairly soon. Regardless, yeah. 